Dr. Vikas Zige is a scientist and in charge of National Center for Preclinical Reproductive and Genetic Toxicology. His major area of interest include reproductive biology, toxicology, and non human primate experimental medicine. He has got many awards, including his career scientist award by the Indian Society for the Advanced Human Research and Biotechnology, and had several publications to his credit. Dr. Dige, over to you. Thanks. Good morning. Uh, the uh, government of India is following the uh, Swachh Bharat Pakhwada uh, all over the country. And in that particular concept, uh, we are also uh, taking up this particular activity at our institute. And so today I will be talking about the single use past plastic, how to actually use the plastic judiciously or now it is high time to discourage the usage of plastic. So uh, this is the program which will definitely going to take us the uh, take us everybody to the plastic mukta bharat, which is really necessary. So uh, the over, the over the period of another 45 minutes, we will see how exactly the uh, changes has been happened. What are the different modalities? What are different strategies government of India as well as the, across the world has been adopted? And uh, this particular information is being taken from the internet resources as well as the OECD guidelines, wherein the, uh, the there are scientific deliberations has happened. Uh, the uh, two years ago, there was a Glasgow, there was a meeting with most, many scientists and uh, G7 meeting wherein they have come across so many agendas that how to curb the usage of uh, usage of the plastic so uh, so what happening so we are we are evolving but evolving from the and then everything is evolved but how but simultaneously we have a tendency to whatever we we've been evolved we have been evolved and then we are actually taking everything to the down to the drain. So you can see this is the activity we are following it. And ultimately, this particular activity is going to happen for everyone. So this is the one picture, which is a live picture, which was actually connected in year 2006, seven, uh, wherein we Mumbai, especially Mumbai faced with the problem of heavy blood, heavy flood uh, rain uh, because of heavy rain and the flood was there. And uh, this was a picture was captured that time. Uh, we can see the drain lines were chalked with the plastics. And then this was the picture we, we observed when in 2005, when, when the this particular activity has happened. And then you can see the seashore was budded, loaded with all these plastics uh, because the uh, that is a tendency of Earth. It never keep everything to with him, especially the sea. It always give it everything to back to you. And then ultimately, this is the picture when we realize that. And see, you can see another wave where in the, especially the dockyard part, this particular activity was there. And then to clean up this particular mess, it took almost year time to, uh, so, so that the normal activities can happen. And this has resulted in a lot of even economic losses as well. And this is the one special activity wherein you can see uh, the, see the, the normal, uh, this was the 2027, 26 July, uh, 2007. And See, this is the way we, we saw the plastic. Now, although it was a degraded one, but it was still lying there in this particular down to the tail. And then eventually it has contaminated the soil and waterways. You can see one picture wherein the bird is uh, dying. So what happened to that bird? Why, why it is actually it died because of that? So what, what was the reason? When, when, so we observed that this is nothing but a single use plastic. So what is exactly the single use plastic? Single use plastics are goods that are made primarily from the fossil fuel based chemicals, like mainly the petrochemicals and are meant to be disposed on a right way after use, often in mere minutes. Single use plastics are most commonly used for the packing, service wear, such as bottles, wrappers, straws, and bags. These are the single use plastics. So one has to be very careful that while, because every time people when go to the market, they, they are not able to differentiate between the single use plastic and the regularly or maybe routinely used plastics. 
so this is the one this is for the activity uh, it was taken place in indonesia as well as other places where they put the polluted by the single wheel plastic so you can see everywhere all over the world this this particular problem is being envisaged we are observing these particular activities everywhere you can see another picture so between 5 to 14 million metric ton of plastic trash flows into the ocean land from every year you can see the enormous quantity of plastic is being loaded to the ocean and again it is coming back to the seashore again the, with the next wave it is going going inside and then every day it is degrading so to come up this what exactly happening so then the united nations environmental program was launched very early and then they they actually formulated some guidelines so this is a document uh, available on the website of uh, unep where we can find out the how exactly the roadmap how to actually how to sustain the over usage of this plastic and then how what are the different guidelines need to be adopted so there are see no one to understand what are the different two main categories of plastics and their single usage application so mainly the uh, thermoplastics and thermosets are the two areas where the, uh, the plastic has been utilized the most common thermoplastics are the polyethylene uh, tetraethylene that is pet then polypropylene low density polyethylene and that is ldp then high density that is hdp polystyrene is there which whatever we are using that polystyrene foam and then expanded polystyrene eps then polyvinyl chloride that pvc whatever we are using it for especially construction purpose and then polylactic acid that pla also is there and then the then pha but there are some other plastic like thermosets which is commonly from the polyurethane phenolic resin epoxy resin silicon vinyl esters acrylic resins so so now one is very important to understand what are the, those these particular uh, categories being utilized for what so the ldp which is used for making the bags trays containers and food packaging film whatever because everything the food is coming in the package form so the film is which is at, uh, actually uh, uh, hampered on that one rotated on this particular package is ldp then the cutlery plates and cups are made up of ps then the uh, milk bottles, especially the hard one, the high, high, high density uh, polyethylene, the milk bottles, freeze, freeze bags, then shampoo bottles, ice cream containers are made up of this particular material. Then the uh, UPS is being involved for making the hot drink cups, insulated for packaging and protecting packaging than the fragile atoms. The PET bottles, uh, the PET is being utilized for the bottles of water and other drinks, dispensing containers for cleaning fluids and biscuit trays. And the, uh, the microwave dishes, ice cream tubes, then the potato chip bags and, bot and then bottle caps are made up of PP. So how exactly when, when we traditionally we were using this particular material earlier for the milk and edible oils, uh, oil, we used to use the glass or metal bottles. Now they have been replaced with three to five layer film pouches are being replaced. Toiletry, that's the paper and glass was used, but now these days plastic pouches or films are being used. Then the uh, cement and fertilizers, especially the jute to, to contain or to store the cement and uh, uh, the fertilizers, so jute bags were used. But now these days we are using HDP own sacks, which is also non non biodegradable. Then the earlier uh, the uh, you must have seen some of the old, old Colgate bottles. It was made up of aluminium uh, uh, tubes, like so the the toothpaste was was there in the metal. Now there and this time we are finding out the toothpaste in the plastic lamin tube. So, so what, who is producing the plastic for us? So the industrial sector, the world produces more than 400 million tons of plastic every year. This is enormous amount of time. This is that of 2017. The largest industrial sector is the plastic packaging industry. Whatever is being packed and handed over to the customer is always packed with the plastic. The packaging utilizes more than 36% of this particular uh, plastic load. Then the uh, then the textiles also. One will be very important that textile, whatever clothes we are getting, they are always wrapped with the plastic. And now these days there are some clothes. People are saying that these are these, are, these days the water repellent plastics and uh, uh, dresses also textiles also coming up so they are also having the plastic loaded into that one so now the clothes also made up of plastics they are also available then the consumers institution produces around 10 percent then the buildings and constructions uh, produces around 16 percent of plastic load and then electrical and electronics atoms they contribute more around four percent so this is the global usage of the plastic. You can see it. The especially now, uh, we, very important to understand uh, the the 
activities conducted by different countries. So you can see the these are the color codes showing the OECD America. So because these are the organizational setups are available in the country, they know that how to actually curb these type of activities. So we can see how, however they are using, they are making this particular activity, the OECD America, OECD Europe, OECD Pacific Asia is there. We are also now a uh, member of OECD country, but still we the activities been actually nurtured or maybe taken up in India are very less Then the Eurasia is there, China, other countries. So you can see these are the plastic usage. And then last 30 years, this activity has emerged like anything. So we are now touching around 480 million metric tons of plastic is being produced every year. So what is exactly happening with this particular plastic? You can see it everywhere. We try to, we, we give the name that we are recycling it. We incinerate, but incineration being done very unscientific way. Incineration has to be done in very systematic way. We will, how to do it, we will see in the next slides. Then sir, are the landfills. People are trying to see that, okay, whatever plastics we are getting that has, that is being taken away from the urban area and then they're put use in the landfill. So I would like to uh, see the, draw attention that the Pacific Ocean, especially the Pacific Ocean has been, America and other countries, they are actually loading every year around 100, 200 million metric tons of plastic been loaded into the seashore. And they are also trying to make this particular seashore with the plastic loads. So it has been there. Then they are making the land of the, the, the plastic one. Then the, the, of course, the later environment, whatever we are contributing as a consumer. Then the, this is the plastic pollution cycles. So for extraction, extraction of the oils and everything. So this particular plastic has been produced Then plastic production is being done. So mainly for making the plastic, very importantly, for making the plastic, we are using high amount of oil to make this particular plastic. So again, the oil, whatever resources we are utilizing, that is being misused to make the plastic. So the, so every year, earlier it was around 4% of the oil usage was done for making these plastics. Now these days, around 20% of the oil usage worldwide is being utilized to make the plastic, extraction of the plastics. And then, then the point of sale, it is going to the consumers, then go, going to the waste industry, come coming, and then everything is dumped and burned to the environment. So this is the one, this is the very dangerous activity. We are following it because we are not doing scientific burning or incineration of this one. So when the plastic waste or food waste are burned, they produce dioxin and furan gases. And if the dioxin is inhaled, it can instantly cause coughing, shortness of the breath and dizziness. Long-term exposure of dioxin also causes cancer. So we every day, whenever, so please, if anybody is burning the plastic, stop them so any part of the country if you anybody's burning the plastic and even at the small scale or the high scale please ask to stop them harmful effects are burning waste is pollution and it can damage to the ozone layer as well so ultimately we are depleting the ozone layer as well the more environmentally friendly way of disposing way is by burning the stable the stable burning need to be done more than thousands degrees celsius that has to be done. People are doing it. That, that is the way it should be actually taken away. Uh, the, so I have to use more than 1000 degrees Celsius temperature to burn the plastic. So it, and then again in the closed containers. The, it can be done by using the incineration method as I already told you. So what exactly happened? So we are littering the landscape, ultimately killing the animals and which is non-biodegradable. So you are, we, we are putting into the dustbin going to the litter size, going to the environment, going to the soil. Ultimately, the flora and fauna in terms of animals as well as the marine animals, we are so they are suffering and still the problem is not being solved. So still every day it is being accumulated in, in, the, in the soil. So it is because it's of bio, bio, non-biodegradable nature. So now there are recently this Glasgow meeting, they have come up with the uh, this one that these are the six reasons to blame the plastic pollution for the climate change. So very ultimate, very, very meticulously they have analyzed all these slides and all these six points has scientific references available for this, these particular things, extraction and production. As I told you, 6% of the global oil consumption is being utilized and expected to reach around 20% by 2050 for making or extracting the plastic. 
the consumption only 9% of this whatever we consume only 9% of the plastic is being recycled globally and the rest is dumped to the natural environment in fact southeast asia one of the largest generation of the plastic waste discarding more than 26 million tons of plastic every day see the number see the number is 26 26 million tons of plastic every day south asia also among the world's highest proportion of the waste that is openly dumped around 75% of the whatever waste we are doing, uh, uh, generating it is being utilized or it's been dumped to the, uh, the uh, land then end of the life when the not recycled what happening to it or disposed on the control manner discarded plastic generate greenhouse gases and emission which exposed to solar radiation both air and water and ultimately this particular radiation has taken to actually making the other furon and dioxin areas uh, gases then around 18 million tons of plastic are mismanaged and washed into the ocean where they emit methane and ethylene due to exposure of sunlight so whatever we are not trying to take care by when discarding or recycling properly down to the drain and causing the uh, the greenhouse gases and then ultimately the emit the methane and ethylene due to the exposure to the sunlight then the fourth point is recycling and closing the loop so even though recycling could significantly reduce the impact of this plastic pollution in the environment, its contribution to climate change, only 5% of total waste generated in South Asia is recycled. Only 5%. And the air, the avoid, intercept, and redesigned circular economy principles applied, especially for the cement, aluminum, steel, and plastic, could reduce the combined emission of these industries by 40%. So even though we applied this air approach, that is avoid, intercept, or redesign, so how to use the plastic it is it is definitely indispensable but you can use the plastic judiciously making it more hard making the size more so the single use plastic need not to be go to the down to the drain so you can see so many appliances so many even walls also being prepared with the plastic they are being used just like japan japan is the one country where everything is made up of plastic because of the they having the seismic zone if their earthquake is been very prone that so they are using the plastic they are the actually originating the plastic by making of the plastics uh, worldwide they, they actually introduce the plastic to the world and now they are using it because they have this problem of having earthquake but then also they are this is the only country where the, everything is being taken care there is no single use plastic count going down to the drain and then only one one uh, city in the kohima uh, in the uh, japan which is known as the clean zero plastic usage city so you can see the country which is producing maximum plastic, utilizing maximum plastic, still has a city which is it is zero usage of the plastic. There is no no down to the drain. So the country who introduced this particular technology, but simultaneously also taking care. So we also need to be going the same way. So another fifth one is the marine litter. So whatever is garbage trucks equivalents are being plastic waste is dumped into the ocean every minute. The marine plastic pollution breaks down to the microplastics very importantly now these days we were not paying attention the plastic was drained down to the drain going to the ocean and because of that as i told you the sunlight and everything it started degrading small small in a very little way and then the microplastics being formed and then these emission as i already told and the there were there were the tendency the planktons especially the plankton sequest around 30 to 50 percent of carbon dioxide whatever is being produced because of the activities it was being taken care because of this anthropogenic activity this the planktons ingest the microplastics and their ability to to sequester the carbon dioxide production also been um, this ability also remove the carbon dioxide from this atmosphere was also decreased of this particular plankton. This again, now whatever we are dumped down to the drain, microplastic been added to the environment and the ocean. The plankton were taking care of the uh, carbon dioxide production, but the plankton are eating the they, they are being loaded with the microplastics, and then this problem has started arising. Then, as a next, the sixth point is very important that's open burning. Open burning is a common waste treatment practice in South Asia and around the developing world. The, the amount of waste burned in India and Nepal contributes around 8.4% of the waste burned globally see the small country the whole world 8.4 percent has been contributed from our end only so this is the plastic waste produced and mismanaged you can see the activity this particular chart 52 around 263 
million people are actually polluting. So you can see the 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 graphs, which is in the red side, the road, the, uh, maybe the dark area, which is actually coming to the Asian countries or India and Russia. This part is been there. So what is exactly happening? The marine litter, a mammoth challenge to the our ocean. So we feel that. If we don't put on a soil, we will down to the ocean because this earth is being surrounded by, by the ocean. But it is being postulated that it's been estimated that by 2050, 90% of the seabirds and the in, they must have ingested the plastic. Marine litters harms more than 600 marine species. This particular data is really alarming to us. And then 50% of the species affected and ingested because of these plastics has been endangered. So they are almost absolute now. There is nothing is available. Fifteen percent has you know, this particular wild uh, marine species has already gone. So this is the one. This is the picture we found it in the deep sea. This is the one we can see. It. This is very alarming. This is the plastic, microplastics, and the microplastics being actually loaded in this particular area. So the microplastics. Everybody says that the plastic. So we can break down. So, no plastic. Don't break down. They break up over the time. Sun and heat slowly turn plastic into smaller and smaller pieces, and until they eventually become what is called as microplastics. These microplastic fragments, pla not more than five millimeter long, are hard to detect and are just about everywhere. Everywhere we can find it out. Even though, if you want it, you can get the uh, municipal corporation water also. If you test it, you will find the microplastics. The some microplastics are even small by design, like the scrubs. Every day we are using the facial scrubs. They have the small beads, micro beads are available. So they also facial scrubs, microfibers, even the polyester clothing, as I has already told you. The polyester clothing also every day when you actually use the wash this cloth, every day we actually take out the microplastics and it is going down to the drain. And then eaten by the wildlife. This is the overall fate of the microplastic, you can say the industry making this particular plastic, then domestic activities, whatever washing as well as this facial scrubs, we are giving it. Then the coastal con activities also con contributing this particular fishing litters and shipping litters also contribute that way. And then the microplastics and micro uh, micro and microplastics has been generated going to the down to the drain. This fragmentation has occurred, then which causing the health problem to the crabs, sea fishes, sinking the sedimentation is occurring, and then the health problem for the sea turtle and as well as whales also been suffering. And then same simultaneously is also accommodated into the soil, and then the corals and the zooplankton and the bioaccumulation and the, the, the uh, this uh, trophic transfer is been also happening because of this microplastic. This is the one news. So now whatever plastic fish eat the plastic like uh, with these teens and yeast and then the researchers say that we, if we open these particular fishes, we can find the plastic particles there. So they observe the plastic particles. Then as I told you, wildlife and the environment almost uh, one lakh marine, marine animals and one million seabirds die every year after ingesting the plastic. The plastic bags travel, they float easily into the air and water. So some of the countries, they observe the air pollution. Microplastics are also in air now. Also in the bottom of the ocean as well as top of the Everest, they are also found in because it is the light in uh, nature, it goes away. This is, these are the closing, the plastic val uh, value chain measures for reducing the microplastic emission. What one can do it? So, so this particular slide we'll discuss in detail afterwards. So as I told you, this is a microplastic coming from the cosmetic, uh, whatever uh, we are using. And this is the recent picture. This is the recent publication came, discovery and quantification of the plastic particle pollution in human blood. This is a recent activity. So earlier this time we were saying that it is not available. It was noted in placenta. placenta. So 22 donors, the blood samples being collected and they observed the PMMA, PP, constant fibrillate, then PS and PE and PET also been observed in these particular human beings. So this is very alarming. So everyone now also we can be tested. We will definitely going to find the plastic. So this is the now necessary that to do like uh, check out blood and then uh, whether we are, we are ingesting the microplastics or not. So now everything is alarming. So now the 
the as as i do the world sustainable uh, goals are been there so sustainable waste management program has been launched by the the uh, unep and so these are the four fair main uh, four main strategies there technical one is strategic economic and financial and then information and communication these are the four main pillar people are trying to use for sustainable waste management so sustainable this especially the standardized and definition of terminology need to be done in technical mode remediate contaminated dump site has to be actually think in a very systematic way develop standards and recycled material and products so whatever product we are trying to develop they should be recycled promote resource use reduction whatever resources we are using especially the oil being utilized to make the plastic that has to be considered and whatever plastic fossils we are using for making the plastic need to be done improve the resource use efficiency efficiency whatever resources we are using then that need to be done promote the and promote uh, and co collaborate the design for the sustainability then strategic one is like improve the compliance across the life cycle it is very important whatever whatever activities we are following they need to be improved address the informal sector with the social inclusion very importantly that we need to actually address socially also to the people take the public meetings and do it promote the the green public procurement this is very important then enforce the producer responsibility so whatever producers are making these plastics that is coming down make a law in india also and on the world world also so we have to enforce the producer responsibility emphasize the zero and holistic waste they are very important the original areas like whatever harmonization are there so one 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 should actually do the make efforts towards the policy harmonization whatever policy is being adopted or given by the unep countries or oecd countries that need to be adopted then one has to communicate and inform to the by making the building comprehensive waste statistics promote the awareness and education and training this is the one way we are actually trying to make people aware so such type of activities need to be done now and again every time every now and then and then it will be promoting how to misuse uh, 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 really curb the usage of this plastic then operate knowledge portal as a collaborative platform on waste management so every year now there is a uh, outlook program is been done for the waste management outlook is there uh, uh, like global countries as well as now sc also we formulated this particular company uh, this particular document is available on the website of oecd so all these asian countries even the oecd uh, european countries or, or non non oecd countries are coming for uh, together and then they are de depositing this particular data how exactly we are recycling this particular process has been informed and then very important economic and financial consideration also need to be done test the effectiveness of economic instrument what exactly we are utilizing or using to curb these particular activities need to be tested invest research and development technology adaptation also need to be done how exactly new innovations need to be done so the next slides we'll see what are the different innovations as i told you these are the recommendation of the interaction council uh, and uh, council members so notice model and educate very importantly members can increase their awareness of their own plastic use seek to model behavior and spread awareness of this influence the organization member can encourage the companies and organization to serve to advance zero waste policies adopt measurement and reporting on plastic use and elaborate call for public and private infrastructure investment need to be done so that members can call the public private public investment so that it can, they can come together and do the needful call for the analysis analysis for investment in new plastic production facilities whatever because plastics is required definitely required but the way the, the need to be produced how exactly it can be reused and then it will not go to the down to the drain so such type of assessment and then human and uh, human as well as environmental protection need to be taken care of in producing this particular uh, plastic facilities then call on industry to increase coordination across the plastic value chain the plastic value chain we discussed earlier so to to have to develop the harmonization guidelines to design the guidelines for manufacturing recycling treatment of the plastic hassan this transition need to be done very circular economy this, this will definitely help to have the circular economy because definitely manufacturing will be there then the recycling has to be done in a proper way then treatment of the plastic so that it can be reused again then call for the policies to all levels of government and reduce plastic waste and promote development of alternative materials so definitely there is a time has come that can be avoid using plastic so what are the alternative methods one can use it 
So then, then there was, as I told you, this was the plastic pollution agreement has been signed by most of the uh, the G7, G20 and ASEAN countries to coordinate on their others ongoing work to develop, implement and enforce multilateral agreements in concert with the other stakeholders and quickly built a network on UN Environment as Assembly to develop a legally binding international agreement to manage plastic throughout their life cycle, reduce avoidable plastics and prevent leakage or plastic waste added to, to the OC. This is the need of our and then this agreement has been signed. And in this connection, so these are the roadmap of policymakers. The 10 step roadmap has been given to this one. Know the baseline, evaluate the possible actions, assess the impact of preferred adopt options, engage the stakeholders in this one, raise the awareness among them, monitor and adjust the policies, enforce, law need to be there, differences and the revenues need to be curbed. Incentive to the industries. If the industry is not, maybe they are producing 100 micron plastic one, they need to be given incentive so that they can uh, take the uh, plastic, produce the plastic which is reusable more than 200 micron. That this type of things also been coming. Then promote the alternatives. That is very important. These are the 10 policy roadmap has to be adopted very efficiently so to curb the uh, this particular activity. So this, as I told you, this is the one which is explained here can skip it as I, as I discuss with you this is the uh, SEA waste management outlook this particular you can just put this particular word in google you will find what activities people and asian countries are trying to cover so this is the, our actually dustbin bag which has everything in this particular you have a bottle you have a tin you have a plastic container everything is there this is the asian outlook so the now the asian countries had come forward especially the japan and then especially the uh, the nepal bangladesh these countries are came together in india also now participating and they are making the guidelines so that this the all what whatever activities we've been doing maybe what are the municipal activities how exactly at what time they take collecting this particular waste uh, waste uh, and then how they are being taken care of, how whether it's recycled dumped or maybe burned so this is the in the then the uh, integrated solid waste management with emphasis on three hours like animal welfare we also have three hours now the you know the waste management also need to be three hours reduce reuse and recycle these are three hours need to be adopted very well so that we can integrate this particular solid waste management can be done it, it comes in all the terms like e-waste as well as hazardous waste collection, decontamination treatment, transportation and generation. So like all these activity need to be actually circularly rhythmed way and then they can be, uh, then they can be reinforced by adopting these three R policies. See, uh, this is the, uh, the waste related sustainable development goal in very detailed way. So the global 12.3 parameters also says by 2030, how uh, the, uh, Per capita global food waste in return is the consumer level has to be rechecked. Then by 2020, what is what will be the picture? So, like these sustainable development goals have also given a lot of emphasis on how to waste manage that particular things. And then the uh, they expect that by 2020 reduce the adverse per capita environmental impact of these particular cities that need to be adopted. And by attending the air quality as well as municipal and other waste management strategies need to be adopted in such a way that they can be curbed together. And then so these are the roadmap is being given. So whether we will be successful or not. So how exactly we will be successful that need to be. Uh, uh, taken care. So then now people are coming with what are the innovations? How exactly these uh, in, uh, plastic technologies can be environmental protection need to be adopted? The classification of innovation that need them to be innovation. How exactly these plastic technologies can be curbed? The by prevention and recycling technology. There are three classifications are there. So prevention. So ideally we have to prevent it then recycle. Then conversion of disposal of waste and leakage removal. Conversion of disposal waste by biodiversity plastic, then leakage removal. These are the one an innovation program. And then the third and foremost is the bio bio based feedstock has been adopted. So crop based feedstock, algae based feedstock, fungi based feedstock, and other biomass has to be done. So now people are trying to make the bio bio based feedstock using this plastic material. And this is the now this is the innovation which is adopted in most of the OECD driven countries. So as I told you, these are the innovations of plastic prevention, recycling have grown the most. So especially the now by 20, uh, see waste prevention is the one which is actually uh, taking uh, the, the interventions more. 
and then the biocide based is less the beginning, but we are just following this one. So this particular information is avail available on the OECD side. How exactly the what are the different strategies being adopted? Where, uh, waste recycling, sorting, recycling, recapping is also been uh, the recyclability also need to be adopted. How exactly what policies need to be done? And then the conversion and disposal of the waste and leakage removal also very considerably adopted these countries. And now we expect that worldwide number of this uh, the and then this is again this company this part OECD countries also giving the uh, the uh, like uh, patentable technologies also available so now if there is an era there is a there is a time that people are innovating new ideas how exactly this recycling can be done so there are every year so this year I think I, I was looking for the around 223 patent has been accepted so there are new technologies coming up to this how exactly recycling can be done or, re or reduction can be done as I told you, the plastic prevention recycling innovation has converted uh, the uh, concentrated in most of the OECD countries. So you, even though, as I told you, Japan is the one which is highly producing plastic, but Japan is actually uh, taking most of the share where the, uh, the recycling and prevention is been adopted. Yeah, the OECD Europe, the 19%, China, 17%, United States, 18%, and the rest of the world, only 7% of prevention and recycling innovation has been created concentrated. And OECD countries, as I told you, China leading the most of the plastic circularity. So, to considering all these activities going worldwide, it's the government of India uh, uh, last year, in 12th August uh, 2021, has enforced the law, uh, which is a gazette notification, wherein what is happening there. See, this is the law. Its efforts been taken to damage caused by the environment through plastics and the Maharashtra Pollution Board. Of course, the law is enforced in all over the country. Now, the Maharashtra Pollution Board from 1st of July 2022, all the all the states has been taken given the timeline. Maharashtra and now the most of the most of the states are adopting this particular deadline. The they, there is a notification. So the March 8th of this particular uh, year, they have given the notification that the plastics element less than 100 micro microns has been taken away so the manufacture import stocking distribution sale and use of following single use plastic including polystyrene whatever polystyrene we are using it expanded polystyrene commodity shall be prohibited with effect from 1st july 2022 Earbuds with plastic sticks, plastic sticks with balloons, plastic flags, candy sticks, ice cream sticks, polystyrene for decoration, plates, cups, glasses, cutlery such as forks, spoons, knives, straws, trays, wrapping and packaging films, around sweet boxes, invitation card and cigarette packet and plastic or PVC banners less than 100 micron is need to be taken away. So these are this is the law now. So they, we will not find any activity all such 100 micron, less than 100 micron activities for these particular things. And these items will be completely taken away from the from 1st July uh, 2020. While enforcing this law, there is a notification also given to the producers and stockists and retailers, shopkeepers and e-commerce companies, street vendors and commercial establishment, as well as like uh, malls and even the cinemas locations and the public to stop production. You cannot produce it. The stocking, distribution, sale, and usage of identified SUPs items as per the timeline specified in the sold MUF and then particular guidelines, and then the necessary action to be taken by the concerned entities to ensure zero inventory and the aforementioned single use plastic items by June 30, 2022. So there will be a complete analysis and then by 30th June, whatever is there with them that need to be declared and all, nobody can keep any plastic there. Even afterwards, then they, there is a, uh, how exactly this will be done. Then afterwards, what they are trying to do it, I didn't put those slides here, but they are now trying to do it that more than 200 micron plastics will be produced and the all the plastic who is producing, there will be a stamp of that particular company on that plastic sheet or plastic bag more than 200 micron so that they will come to know this who has actually invented this who has produced this particular plastic so that if less than that the any time that they will take this particular bag to the, uh, uh, the laboratory and they will find it out is less than 100 micron or uh, 200 micron that particular company will be charged first and then the end user will be definitely going to the jail so going to, to the detail what exactly banned as I told you, less than 200 ml drinking water paid bottles, then having liquid holding capacity, 
plastic mineral water for pouches has been banned. Then the one time usage, single plastics, dishes, spoons, plates, banned. But this is allowed. But this should be now more than 200 micro size. So you will find the very thick bottles into the market now, especially the soda bottles, everything. Then the it is this is banned, completely banned. The handle or maybe the plastic bags or even the without handle with handle bags with non-woven bags also been taken away. This is also planned plastic bags with non-woven shopping bags. They are also been taken away. Disposable dishes, bowls usage and the straws also taken away. This is still allowed, but now this plastic should not be less than 200 micro for wrapping this or economic zone. This is allowed 20%, which will be, and then they have to be given the roadmap also that the minimum 20% recyclable plastic material and having thickness more than 200 by, this is 50 micron. Now this law has changed to uh, 200 micron. So this was allowed in last year, right? 2018, 19, the law has come. And then, then they reinforced into 2021. And now they are taking this particular 50 micron instead of 50 micron, now 200 micron is been enforced. This is, still allowed but now all these plastic bags will be having 200 micron size to store the grains and uh, the material Com this uh, co compostable plastic bags especially that can be biodegradable especially the to making the plant seeds uh, to grown so this is still allowed but now this also should be more than 200 micron this is allowed tetraplax is allowed which is also uh, it, it which is biodegradable then the uh, plastic biogas, especially the milk, uh, this one, this is this plastic will also come as edible plastic, which will be more than 200 micro. This is allowed, but now this is also more than 200 micro. Everything will be very tough and the cost of this particular material will definitely going to be increased. This is allowed for domestic purpose, which will be reusable. This is again allowed. This is banned completely the styrofoam. The whatever thermocol we are using it these are the decoration material which is being used this is also completely banned this is thermocol boxes preserve fish and fisheries still allowed but now this this has this activity need to be there will be stamping of that it will should not go to the down to the drain it will be reused again and again it will never go to that and if it is then need to be uh, down to the drain there is a specific activity who will collect it and then take it to the hundred thousand degree celsius incinerator and then there will be decomposed this uh, plastic uh, stationary products is still allowed but all this will be very hard material then the other plastic producers, especially like countries like India, choose to uh, to take care of the grains and everything. And especially the uh, most these days, the uh, they are making the artificial lakes also been prepared. So wherein they are using this particular plastic sheet, which is very hard one, and very thick. That still it is allowed. So what is the penalty? First offense five thousand, second offense ten thousand, and the third offense is twenty five thousand fine plus three month imprisonment. So what should we do? How exactly one can avoid these activities? If you use a cloth bag, we can save six bags a week. Every day, if you take this particular bag with us, that means 24 bags a month. That's 28, 288 bags a year. That's around 22,176 bags in average type lifetime. These many bags we can actually avoid going down to the drain. And, at, and just one out of five people in our country did this. Out of five, only one do it. So still, we can save these many bags. Numbers. I can read this particular number. So from our lifetime, we can reduce it. So out of five people, if one do this activity, if you know, see the effect, if the five people do these activities, there will be no bags available, no single-use plastic bag available on the, or maybe down to the train. So what should one, one should do? Carry the reusable shopping bags. Give up the bottle, bottle, uh, bottle water. Carry your own containers for take up the food and leftovers. Carry a stainless steel travel mug or bottle bottle all the time for coffee or other drinks while out of the world. Carry reusable utensils and glass drinking straws. When ordering pizzas, say no to the little plastic table, which is just been picked, taken care of. Should not, the lid should not touch to the pizza. That should be avoided. You can call them and say that, okay, don't you give me, send me that particular plastic table. Treat yourself to an ice cream cone. 
cut out sodas, juices, and other plastic bottle beverages. Let go to the frozen convenience foods. Say no to the plastic producing ba uh, produce bags. Shop your local markets, local farmer uh, local farmer market, so that nothing can be go maybe we have, cannot order it so most of the time online purchasing has given uh, the most of the plastic container or plastic things has been wrapped and then uh, the things are wrapped, wrapped in the plastics are come to you return containers for berries cherry tomatoes or other small fruits and vegetables to the farmers market for reusage one should do it bring your own container for meat and prepared foods most of the times when we buy the meat or something like that, we should take the utensils from home so that it will be the no need to take the plastic bags. Buy a fresh bread that comes as either paper bag or no bags. You can go to the bakery and then the bakery will be definitely selling you the uh, breads, which is so one can avoid the plastic wrap uh, we go coming to the home. Choose the milk in returnable glass bottles. Now there is a high time because every day we are getting the milk in a plastic uh, this one that can be avoided then choose wine bottles in glass with nature cork stoppers learn to love the bulk beans choose plastic free chewing gums clean the vinegar clean with vinegar and water need to be uh, because most of the times people are trying to use the uh, like uh, plastics uh, being used like uh, these uh, spatulas or maybe the brushes are there so if you use these plastic bags every time the plastic is going down to the drain so try to avoid it just simple vinegar and water add it and then flush it it will definitely go away these are simple technologies and so things need to be adopted hand wash dishes with without plastics use natural cleaning clothes and scrubber instead of plastic scrubbers we use the precious cover to wash the clothes use natural rubber gloves instead of plastic rubber gloves check labels for personal care products then switch to the bar soaps instead of liquid soaps. Give up shampoo for in plastic bottles. Choose locations and lip gums and plastic free containers. Choose toilet paper that not wrapped in the plastic. Use plastic free feminine hygiene products. Look into the plastic free screen option, sunscreen options. Explore the plastic free hair accessories and tools. Keep your reusable foodware at the office. Carry lunches and reusable stainless steel containers and cloth bags. Don't use the plastic box. Choose reusable clothes sandwich or snack bags or plastic baggies. Choose glass or stainless steel food storage containers and use them whatever you are ha already having it. Learn to preserve the food without plastic. Don't put it in a plastic container. Choose stainless steel ice cubes, trays and uh, obstacle molds. Avoid disposable plastic paints. Compose the food waste to avoid plastic garbage bags. Try to put it in the dustbin or maybe the down to the soil and then it can be kept. Learn strategies to green leaf, uh, green gift giving. So consider giving the charitable gift cards instead of sending the gift wrapped or something like that. It's better to give the gift cards so that they can be the less usage. So these are the very small points being considered. If you add up those things, definitely going to have a lot of impact. Because when you actually give the gift, we feel that the gift need to be wrapped and then given. There is no need. The person is know that he is taking, person is giving also very no. So why to, why to hide it? So we wrapped in a very single use plastic that he just thrown it away and then throws it down to the dustbin. So it is big, give the open things or give or maybe give the gift cards. Request plastic free gifts for yourself, as I told you. Find ways to wrap gifts without plastic tapes. Request zero plastic packaging when ordering online. You can actually ask them. They can, they, they can put it in a cloth bag and send to you. People are very fussy that no, my this or the washing material should not come with my food material. So accordingly, they wrap it separately and then send to you. So that that to be avoided. Maybe you can uh, order two times so that this can be avoided. Get off mailing list to avoid plastic envelope windows. So when, when we have to take the pledge, we realize that our environment is degrading day by day due to plastic pollution because it does not destroy easily and take a long time to destroy. Now let's take a place together. We will stop use of the plastic bags and we'll use reusable cloth bags only. We'll place that, we'll educate our community people to save our environment. We will share the possible solution of plastic pollution with our community people. So this is uh, one step, Ek Kadam Swachata Ki Or which will definitely going to as the swastha bharat and the swachh bharat ka sapna plastic mukt desh ko apna
thank you for your patient care. So they you can ask the questions or queries, anything like that in the laws or everything. We had this, uh, you know, two years ago before COVID came in, uh, the classic use was banned in Dubai. Yeah. But then again, uh, you know, the governance could not be followed. Exactly. Yes. So do you think that July 1st, say what we are going to get? Really yes, uh, that's a very good question. So what happened, you know, that time when the, they put the law, so uh, the uh, the other company, other side of this particular plastic production, they said that we have enough with us, which is being produced. So since that time, they have given the advisory to this particular stock case and everything that whatever is being produced, use it. So, and then the by step by step, we do it. Even though for this 22, uh, 20, 1st July 22, they have given another deadline up to 30th December 2022, wherein the stock, which is prepared, especially the cigarette wraps, and even these are personal products also there, which is wrapped in the plastic, which cannot be taken away because they have they have almost two years of expiry. So that cannot be taken. So by 31st of December, nothing will be available, which is wrapped in the plastic. So they are now phasing out step by step. But uh, as you rightly said, there was a public petitions were there and then the cross question. So they've given the answer that I was reading that one uh, petition also. They said that this activity is being asked question to us, but simultaneously we have to also listen to the other side that enough was produced with us and which is we are not ready. We are the country is not ready to phase out everything in a one go. So it will be definitely phased out. So earlier it was given more than 50 micro. So now they are giving more than 200 micro. So this is coming out earlier with more than less than 50 micron should be taken away, which has taken away. So now we can see slightly thick bags are available in the market, which is more are up to 100. Now up to 1st July, only 150, around 100 to 200. But, but after 200, uh, December 2022, no bag will be available uh, on 20, more than 22 micro, uh, 200 micron and then uh, less than 200 micron and all the bags which will get it from the market will be stamped who produce it. So it is very important that that will be tracked, that that activity is going. Yes, definitely. Because see, these activities, we are already doing it, like thalates. This activity is already there. This is known, but the, the effect of the giving the chemical which is making to make the plastic. But now we realize that the microplastics itself is available in the bloodstream. So we there was no uh, actually uh, analysis was done that whether the human blood will have the plastic. The effect was already been seen. Plastics are uh, producing whatever the chemicals used to make the plastic. They are dangerous. Definitely. The, now we are getting the plastic. That means the material is already there in the body. Thank you, Dr. DK, for your insightful talk. It will certainly help us to decrease the use of plastic. Now, I invite Dr. Taruna to present a memento to Dr. DK. <laughs> thank you everyone for coming here thank you, you for your time yes